so we understand that there was the Vedic tradition and then the poets, the Seer poets, Valmiki and Vyasa came through and they, uh, uh, they created their great epics. Then how was the relevance of a new poet like Kalidasa, how was he received in uh, the Indian tradition? When uh, two stalwarts had already passed, how was a new poet and, uh, received and what are his contributions? Wonderful question. Of course, Vyasa and Valmiki put together in a miniature form with all beauty becomes Kalidasa. Kalidasa is a worthy son of Vyasa and Valmiki because Vyasa and Valmiki's influence, though it is seen elaborately pronounced manner in all the aspects of Indian culture, including the religious practices, devotional practices, that is bhakti, karma and jnana and other things. And Kalidasa's emphasis can be well realized. Kalidasa's influence as well can be well explored in the aspect of Kala Yoga or the beauty appreciation or art appreciation. We do have a lot of elements connected with the, the things like Bhakti Yoga and Karma Yoga in Kalidasa's works too. Kalidasa touches our heart in a more refined manner, though the number of people who are going to Kalidasa may be less, but the influence of such people, the so-called minority, is very much. And in that sense, Kalidasa has been the distilled wisdom of the Vedic seers and the wisdom of Vyasa and Valmiki. And also the beauty of Kalidasa is what that has not been elaborately dwelt upon or that which has not been vividly described by the great poets like Vyasa and Valmiki. We should call them as Arsha Kavis, seer poets. That has been well taken care of by Kalidasa. For example, the Shodash Samskaras have not been vividly explained in a poetic fashion in the epics of Vyasa and Valmiki. But Kalidasa takes care and in a meticulous manner he explains them fully. And also the aspect of education and also the aspect of nature appreciation. For example, all the six seasons have not been described with Vyasa and Valmiki. Hardly in Valmiki we have four seasons and it's very hard to see them in Vyasa. But nature and the change of nature so beautifully seen through the glass of uh, these seasons has been wonderfully recreated in the works of Kalidasa. For example, he has one work itself completely devoted, entirely devoted for seasons, that is Rutsamhara. And even in his other epics, he dwell, dwells upon that. Not only that, the theme of Rama and Krishna have been very vividly elaborated in the works of Vyasa and Valmiki. But the theme of Shiva has been profoundly described by Kalidasa. And in that sense, the three great ideals, Shiva, Rama and Krishna, find their expressions in Kalidasa, Valmiki and Vyasa respectively. Apart from that, we have many more such things. Subtlety, beauty, enjoyment, sustained appreciation, contemplation and then enjoyment without a sort of guilt in our hearts. All these things have been very vividly and beautifully in a succinct manner explained by Kalidasa. And that's why the influence of Kalidasa is very much. And not only that, art is a great expression and also a great communicative entity in the field of culture propagation and religious propagation. Kalidasa's art has paved lot more vistas and avenues in that way. Many other poets have followed Kalidasa and through the path of Kalidasa, they have realized the great works of Vyasa and Valmiki. In that sense also, Kalidasa becomes a bridging force, bridging force, vital force behind these things. And so all the later Indian poets, whether they belong to the Sanskrit world or the other, they all go to Kalidasa. And through Kalidasa, they realize Vyasa and Valmiki.